Is it okay to kill animals? It's a touchy subject, but I think if we all sit down and talk about it together with openness and authenticity, we might walk away better people. Let's discuss it now. Hey there, Chris Waters here, The Huntsman, and tonight I thought I'd sit down and stop and address the question, is it okay to kill animals? Now, I'm a hunter. I'm gonna have certain thoughts and values and philosophies I'm gonna share with you in this video. You may have contrary ones, and I encourage you whether they're the same as mine or against mine or different from mine, share them in the comment section below and make sure when you're doing it, just consider other people, be open and honest and kind, and hopefully we can all learn something. Now, when it comes to addressing this question, is it okay to kill animals? I think it's important to break it down into kind of bite-sized chunks because it's a complex complex issue and it requires a complex answer. The first thing I think is important to discuss is the fact that killing is a part of the natural order, the natural system. It's been helping for thousands and thousands and thousands of years, the predator versus prey relationship. In Australia, we have so many animals that engage in that system. We have foxes, we have dingoes, we have wild dogs, we have crocodiles, we have snakes, all kind of competing in this space and killing for food and resources. And it's interesting when you ask people about those animals engaging in that act, and they tend not to have a moral kind of objection to it. So for instance, is it okay for a fox to go and kill a chicken in the wild? And most people would say, no, that's fine. Like that's just the fox is just doing what the fox is always done really. But then you can say, well, foxes also kill for sport or for fun or potentially training. It's difficult to know exactly why they do it. So a fox will go in and kill every chicken in the chicken coop and then leave. Uh, just taking one of the chickens and the question is well is that okay and people will have different answers to that depending on where they sit it's interesting though considering that for the longest time people have operated in this natural system this natural order as well and only recently in this modern age have we been engaging in more of a commercial uh, order when it comes to eating meat so for the longest time we went out and we hunted and we killed and we used that food to feed our families to feed ourselves uh, and I wonder whether people back then thought that it was wrong to go and do that, to support your family, to eat that way. Uh, but all of a sudden we're in a modern age now where we can take animals out of their natural habitat and we can put them in pens and we can raise them up in bulk for food and that's somehow more natural or more ethically correct. It's just, it's an interesting point. Another way to approach the issue is concerning our biology. Now, again, for the longest time, humans have engaged in that natural order of going out and hunting and killing animals for our food and sustenance. We've been doing it so long, in fact, that our biology is attuned and geared and optimized towards the consumption of meat and vegetables. So, for instance, if you take meat out of your diet and only have vegetables, well, you have to supplement it. We call them supplements. It's an artificial or chemical way to take those things that are naturally occurring in nature that we can go and get for ourselves and hunt uh, through the killing of animals, or we can go and artificially produce it. And again, for some people, that kind of commercial synthetic approach is far more moral or ethical than going out and harvesting those animals that we've been doing for millennium. And our bodies become attuned to doing that and our biology has become attuned to that. So maybe you're of the position that you think killing is just bad, full stop, that we just shouldn't kill animals regardless of the systems that exist, regardless of what happens in the wild and regardless of our biology. It's an interesting point and it's an interesting kind of topic to discover and pull apart. For me, I think death and killing is simply a transitional state. It's moving from one state, being alive, transitioning the death to something else, whatever is after death. And for whatever reason, we think that that transition is bad, is evil, is cruel, is unfair, is violent. But if we look at other transitions in nature, we don't seem to attach that same moral value. So for instance, water turning from a liquid, boiling it, the transition, to a gas, the, you know, the other state. No one would tell you that boiling water is bad, is evil, it's cruel, but for some reason, the action of killing that transition, we label that as bad. I think a better way to look at it is you can attach a moral value to what happens before and after. So the process of that transition. And I think when you look at it that way, you can see it through an interesting lens because most hunters, and I think it's important to acknowledge that there are bad hunters out there that, that aren't good, that are, that are cruel, that are violent. But for the most part, I think you'll engage with hunters that that love animals, that care for animals, that are compassionate, that try everything in their utmost to look after animals. 
there's a process of care involved through that transition. For instance, when a hunter goes out, the hunter wants to ensure that the animal is as least stressed as possible. You want to get the jump on the animal, you want to surprise it so that you don't stress it. I mean, part of it is you don't want to scare it away, but you don't want to stress the animal. The flip side of that as well is you want a clean shot. You want to make sure that that death is quick and easy. Why? Well, because you value the item, you value the animal, you value the resource, you appreciate it, and you don't want it to suffer. There is nothing worse to a hunter than shooting an animal and only wounding it. So for instance, shooting a deer and then the deer runs off into the bush. Now that is tragic. That breaks my heart when that happens. It's horrible. You want to do everything in your utmost to avoid that. Honestly, not even taking shots if you think that you can't hit it. Why? Because you value the animal. Because you don't want the animal to suffer needlessly. I would even argue that most hunters value animals more than anti-animal killing activists because we appreciate them, because we spend so much time in the wild studying them, observing them, harvesting them, and valuing that resource. So when people think about death and killing and killing of animals, I feel like sometimes we attach this Hollywood movie kind of approach to it, where it's been treated in Hollywood, where it's violent and it's graphic and it's extreme. Hunting couldn't be anything further from that truth. Killing an animal in the wild couldn't be anything further from that truth. It is a quick process. It is a process full of respect, care, and compassion. And it's a process, honestly, that is geared towards harvesting a material and a resource that is then used to look after a family or a loved one, to feed, and to take the, the highs and use those for things as well. So I hope that that's helped open your eyes in regards to why, at least for a hunter's perspective, killing isn't bad. Killing animals isn't bad. And again, you're going to have your own opinion and it's going to be potentially in support of this or contrary to this. And I want to hear it. So make sure you drop it in the comment section below. Maybe you like you can articulate things a bit better than I can. And I would certainly appreciate that. And we've all got something to learn here. It's a kind of shifting point. Uh, and there's always something to learn from hunters and activists alike. So make sure you share in the comments your thoughts. And also, if you're a hunter and you have friends that are against uh, hunting, I encourage you to take this video and share it with them as well. Hopefully open up their eyes. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully I see you in a video soon. All right, bye.